All right. Welcome in, everyone. Um, welcome to our first podcast of 2024. I'm Strat over at Alpine Trading and a really, really special guest with us um, today, PB Trades, 16 year old day trader. Super, super excited for this one. Um, you know, certainly living a life that a lot of 16 year olds aren't living. So I'm really excited to jump into it and hear your story. But I appreciate you coming on to the podcast, PB. Welcome on. Thank you so much for having me, Strat. I'm blessed to be the first person on. I'm super, super excited to get into it. Yeah, for sure. So, Let's give everyone a little bit of an introduction of who PB is, where you started. Um, I, I mentioned that you're a 16 year old day trader doing very, very well, um, has quite the following on social media. So how about a little bit of an introduction on who you are, what you're doing uh, outside of day trading full time, also being a student. Uh, I'd like to give everyone a little bit of a background on who PB is and what you've been able to do the number of years that you've been into the market. Sure. So um, I'm PB, a 16 year old day trader. I started like the whole entrepreneur space right when COVID hit and quarantine started. I was like, okay, I have all this time off. And at the time I'm 12 years old. I'm like, oh, all this time off. Let me try and find ways to make money online. So I looked up videos and how can I make money online as a 12 year old kid? I saw this thing called drop shipping. I started drop shipping. I made a little bit of money. But I didn't really like it. So after a month, I stopped it because all my Facebook accounts got banned because I was under 18. And then it was like very, very confusing. I tried to do a different thing and it wasn't working. So then I I just I didn't really like it. So I kept looking for new ways to make money. And then one day I was just scrolling on TikTok, not even looking for anything, just like scrolling like a random, a regular kid. And then I found a video of this guy who was like flexing this money. And it was like about stocks, you know, how he said he made it all from stocks and hit him up and all this stuff. After I saw that video, I was like, yo, he just made all that money online. Let me see if I can do that too. That whole night, I literally just spent watching YouTube videos, watching YouTube videos, watching YouTube videos, watching YouTube videos. And then I didn't sleep that whole night. By the time I was still watching YouTube videos, my parents went down to get coffee and they're like, why are you still up? And I was like, I just watched literally all night. I stayed up watching videos and the stock market and trading stocks and how to invest. I want to get into trading. And then my dad's like, trading? Where did you get that from? And then he told me that he actually has a buddy who trades stocks so that he's going to tell him he's going to get me in touch with him. So I got in touch with him and he told me to follow, download Twitter and follow like all these big, big people in the OTC markets. So that's how I did. And then I got started into the OT OTC market. And it's pretty funny because one of those YouTube videos I said that I started were I was by Umar Ashraf and it was he was buying his own Lamborghini, like five hundred thousand dollars, all by trading profits. And that was super, super inspiring for me. And it's crazy now because I'm actually good friends with Umar. And it's like, you know, how far it became like from watching this guy, helping him get me into trading. He helped me get into trading. And now, you know, I know him pretty well. It's pretty crazy. But that's kind of how I started and how I got into the whole space. Yeah, wild story. Uh, and, and we'll touch on Umar a little bit later in the in the podcast. But I imagine, you know, going back two, three years ago during the COVID market, being, you know, at that point in time, 13, 14 years old, you were interested in the stock market when you have other peers of yours probably interested in finding what the new video game is that's that's out at that time. Can you speak a little bit about what that dynamic has been like in your in your real life? Because being 16 years old, you're talking about the stock market. Most people never even get into the stock market as an active trader. They're only ever exposed to the stock market in their long term retirement accounts, even, you know, adults that are 40, 50, 60 years old. So what has that been like in your personal life, knowing that you are so inundated into a market and into something that most kids and even most adults never even have the knowledge to jump into and learn at a high level? This is how I view it. So kids, right? They have hobbies. They have things they like to do. Some kids like to play sports. Some kids like to play video games. Some kids like to, I don't know, bunge bungee jump or ski or cliff jump. For me personally, I just had a drive to make money. I had a drive to hustle. I had a burning fire inside of me that was saying I had to find something that I love. I had to find my passion. I had to find, you know, that thing. And it's definitely kind of set me apart from everybody else because think about it, Strat. You're in high school and a random kid with 30 followers is posting videos in the stock market. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to get clowned on. So that's kind of, um, I never really cared about it though because I knew they'll see in the long run, which, you know, now you can see. 
it's more or less like it's just my what I like to do instead of what other people like to do and what I like to sp- spend my time on versus what other people like to spend their time on. So, you know, my peers now, obviously, they like I've kind of I tr- my goal is to onboard as many of the youth I can possible into the market and not even day trading, but I just want to educate them on financial freedom, how to achieve it and the beauty of compounding gains in the stock market. So my goal is to kind of keep onboarding the youth. And obviously there's not a lot of kids like me who have that hobby, but I do feel like I've definitely onboarded at least like a thousand people onto the space just from my posting. So there's definitely, it wasn't a lot, but now like all my friends at school, they all want to get into trading, like all of them, because they've seen what I've done. But what they don't recognize is that it's not for everybody and what I've gone through. They don't recognize, or they think I forgot when everyone used to talk about me for doing it. So um, yeah, it's definitely, it's very different, but I love it and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, even if I had to go through the whole journey again and again and again and again, I would still do it. For sure. Yeah, I love that answer, you know, and and um, my formal background education is in finance. I went to undergrad for finance, played college baseball, and then I went and got my master's degree in finance as well, none of which I actually use to, to actively day trade now. And one of the things that I always tell people and I wish they had when I was in high school, when I was your age, was just a, a class on the stock market in general, right? Because growing up, and I'm sure you've heard it throughout business classes in high school or marketing classes or whatnot, we never really get exposed to the stock market. We're, we're told that there's this market that people invest in and they have their retirements in. But at least for me, I never grew up with the knowledge that you could make active money in the stock market. I was always told that it was a passive investment type of market. You know, you always heard about day traders. I think before the COVID boom and when we had the boom of retail traders that hit, no one really believed that you could actually day trade from your phone or from a computer without feeling like you were gambling into something. So I agree with you 100%. I think that, you know, there, there there should be some type of education, you know, when it comes to high school students, when it comes to kids of your age. And I think that might be why you and I get along so well, because we just want to bring awareness to what's out there. There's there's so many people in this world. And I feel like I did a street interview last week and uh, we, we polled about 20 people. And I'd say 16 to 17 of the people had never even experienced the stock market and really didn't know how to get into the stock market. And so I think the majority of the population still hasn't figured out what it is and how they can actually use it to make active money, you know, in, instead of passively investing in it for retirement. 1000%. And I think that's kind of, that's a goal, you know, to inspire and bring as many people to the space as we can and show them the truth, the freedom, you know, how to escape the matrix, how to, ex- I know I'm saying matrix, but kind of how to escape the rat race. Cause that's really what it is. Like they really trying to keep you inside of a, inside of a little box. Like I was thinking about it the other day and like, dude, college is just like a course that you just have to take. Like you have to pay for and take, or they've drilled it into your brain that you have to take it. It's like, what if they drilled into your brain that you have to take strats course? You have to, you have to, or you won't succeed. Like it's, it's, it's nuts. They truly, truly have got this stuff down to like the penny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's insane to think about, you know, when I went through undergrad, I, I, you know, you, you pay for undergrad. Fortunately, I had a, uh, an athletic scholarship, so I didn't have to pay, uh, you know, for my undergrad, but all of my peers that came out with me, we all went into the workforce and it was, you go into the workforce to pay back everything you just learned. And I knew going into the corporate workforce, the way I look at it is a salary is really like the, the drug that corporate America gives you, right? They give you just enough to get by. And then they promise you a little bit every single year to where you can make a little more and a little more and a little more. But I knew that taking a salary was never going to propel me to the level of owning a business or scaling up my trading or doing something of that that nature right when you talk to business owners who have been able to make millions of dollars every single year how have they done it 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 hasn't been because they've taken a salary working for a company the person who owns that company has been able to make millions of dollars um, or the day trader who figured it out was able to make millions of dollars but i always wanted to be a part of that 10% 10% of the population or, you know, 5% of the population that was really able to live life on my own terms, travel when I wanted to not have to answer to a, a boss or, you know, answer emails or things like that. So the fact that you're at that stage right now and you're 16 just speaks, you know, volumes to the wisdom that you have already um, and the, the the trajectory that you're going to be on. And I know we've talked about this before, but I'm just really excited to 
fast forward five years and see where PB investing's at, you know, five years from now or Thank in 10 you so years, much. you know, what are you doing? So, you know what I was thinking about though? Like, this is the difference between college, school, and the real world, or even God. Like, okay, think about it with God, He tests you and then you learn things in the market, you get tested and then you learn from it in business. You get tested, then you learn from it, then you pay for the price. But with college and school, you learn and then you get tested. What do you think is better, getting tested and then learning or learning and then getting tested? That, that like really hit me and I was thinking about it. 100%. I haven't thought about it from that angle. That's a that's a really unique angle to talk about. Um, I, I want to I wanna bring it back a little bit because you mentioned being 16 in school and posting on your TikTok, which has now grown to, you know, very, very big numbers. Your Instagram is very, very big numbers now. Your Twitter account or X is now over 120,000 followers, I believe. When you first started and you were getting clowned or, you know, had troll comments or things like that from kids in school, did you ever think that it was going to get to the point where your social media account was going to experience the same type of trolls or jokesters or you know just flat out haters that you see now and being an adult in my shoes i even sometimes have a hard time dealing with some of those um how have you dealt with it because i had a mentor one time that told me if you go full force with this and you really put yourself out there and you want to have success success is going to come with a lot of people who don't want to see you succeed because they're envious of where you're at in life and he made sure that i was very aware of that he said if you do this this is what's going to happen and you need to know that you know, you, you have to be okay with this happening and you have to be able to ignore them and continue to press forward. So I'm curious, you saw it in school, you had peers in real life that were doing this. What was it like having adults on the internet and, and on social media doing this as well? And how have you been able to manage those negative comments or negative emotions that might come with, you know, hatred from social media? You know what? It's actually, it's, it's incredible how evil the, some of the world is. Like I never would have thought, you know, grown adults could sit there and hating the kid like they do to me. But in the beginning, it did really, really kind of used to affect me because think about it, like, you know, I'm like a 13, 14, 15 year old kid, like seeing all these hate comments about me, all these people clowning on me. And we're not just talking one, two, three people. There was days where I'd wake up to 20 DMs, every single one hate, 200 hate comments in a post. Somebody made a, a, a hate comment, a hate video about me and it got 1.1 million views. Someone made one on TikTok, 200,000 views, 5,000 comments. All I could say is that once I truly realized that, okay, PB, I sat down with myself and I said, because it was really affecting me. I even had to have some deep talks to my parents because as it's affecting me, I had to try and hide all the emotions that I was feeling because I didn't want to see my parents see me down like that because they're ready. Like, yeah, I'm sure you're, you're like, if you had kids, right? And somebody was clowning on your kid like they did on me, wouldn't you, wouldn't that upset you? I'd be super defensive and anything yeah. I can do to get them out of that situation so they don't feel, you know, mentally uh, beat down, basically. Exactly. And, you know, feeling that as a kid while managing all these things while trading, it could affect you. But I'm lucky where I realized that and my mentor kind of helped me do this a little bit. The moment I stop having haters, the moment I have to start worrying because I'm never, ever going to meet a hater doing better than me. Think about it. You'll never, ever, ever, ever meet a hater doing better than you because haters are people. It's, it's true. They hate you because they ain't you. Haters are people that want to be like you, but they can't. So they try and change the way people view you because they're jealous and envious, envious of you. 100%. So, yeah, I really just realized that and I told myself, I got to keep going. This should motivate me. These people are saying this about me. I'm truly under your skin. And the funny thing is, the ones with the most hate comments, the ones that go the most viral. So it's better for me. Keep hating on me. The I want you to hate on me. Yeah, give me give me the engagement so I can show the world <laughs> what I'm doing at 16 exactly. years old. It's it's true. I mean, when I first started, like I said, the hate comments really, I took it to heart because I, I felt like I, I did and I do have really good intentions and I want to bring awareness to what we're doing every single day. And the people that reach out to you and they try to, they try to you know, make your day even worse or make you seem like someone that you're not, it definitely negative, negatively affected me. And, you know, let's, let's not even talk about the fact that trading itself is a very emotional thing to do. And there's a lot of negative emotions tied around trading. I mean, I remember some of my darkest days were from losing days that I had in trading when I was, you know, back during the COVID market where it was very easy to make money. There were days that I would make money and then days I would lose money. 
And when I, you know, right before I had that breakthrough, and I remember I, I lost almost $20,000 in one day. Wow. Um, and so you have days like that, right? You have negative days. Then you have days where you get trolls and people that hate on you on social media. And it's just like, is it even worth it for me to continue doing this? But then you think about, you think about the people out there that want to get out of the rat race that you talked about, the people that want to get out of the system and the world that we live in and be able to take a vacation when they want to and pay off credit card debt or save up for their next, you know, big purchase or whatever it is. And that's what really kept me going. Because at the end of the day, I don't know how you feel about this, but you and I are looking at the same exact charts that billionaires and, and multimillionaires on Wall Street and huge hedge funds are looking at every single day. So that's the one thing that continues to bring me back to the market is that it's a level playing field and we have the exact same opportunity. We're looking at the exact same setups every single day that a lot of these successful day traders in the retail world and you know on Wall Street are, are doing every single day. Yeah, I mean, trading is the best way, but it takes super, super hard to make easy money. It's I saw somebody tweet this today. He said, trading is a shortcut to becoming a millionaire, but the shortcut has so many difficulties. So, I mean, it's, it's true, man. Trading, it gives you so much opportunity, but people just don't really know how to execute with it, you know? If you want to be in the game for the next five to 10 years, why are you full porting acting like tomorrow is the last day of trading? What you should be doing is having your dreams and with your dreams, setting up goals and goals that you can achieve through making a plan. And what's the only way to, achieve, to go through a plan It's to execute. And how do you execute? You have to take action. So take, ex mm -hmm. take action, execute, make a plan. If that plan sets you up for a goal and have your goals set you up to achieve your dreams and steal them from your sleep. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's so funny that you mentioned that, right? Because I was talking to a mentee of mine yesterday or two days ago, and I brought up this analogy, and they said that's probably the best analogy that I've ever heard when it comes to trading stocks. People get into the stock market because like you did when you were looking at YouTube, the school of YouTube, you saw the Lamborghini and you came across Umar's video. He bought a Lamborghini. I want to learn how to make money online. People do the same thing. They see you and I posting successes. I want to do this and I'm going to be able to do it tomorrow. What I always like equate trading back to is if you want to get into better shape, right? Or you want to, you want to have a six pack of abs, right? If you start working out today, are you going to have a six pack tomorrow? Absolutely not. If you don't have one, right? But what are, what you can do is you can achieve the level of having a six pack or achieve the level of physical fitness that you want to get to. If you have a, a regimented, systemized, documented approach that has consistency in your routine every single day. And I think trading is no different. Can I be a millionaire tomorrow from the market if I only have a thousand or two thousand dollars? Chances are very, 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 very slim, right? Can I get there if I follow a consistent strategy and a, a, a systematized approach that I document every single day and I do it with consistency mm -hmm. every single day? 100%. And so when we think about that, I'm curious, what has been your strategy and how did you develop the strategy that you have to become a trader that in 2023 had a win rate over 80%. I think that the reason I have such a high win rate is because I truly focus on higher quality setups instead of trying to catch the top here, bottom here, bottom here, top here, bottom here, top here. There's so much money to make just catching the chunks of the moves. So the way I like to think about it is I'll go into my strategy right after this, but think about if a bus is riding in the street, right? Are you going to go and jump in front of the bus and hope it stops for you? Or are you going to go to the bus stop? wait for the bus to stop, hop on the bus, and ride the bus to the next bus stop. So are you going to try and catch the top of the stop of the move, or are you going to wait for the stock to retest, to retest the bounce spot, retest the breakout level, get in, ride it to the next target, and get out? There is no reason to overcomplicate it. Stop running in front of moving trains. Yeah. So I think that the reason I have such a high success rate is I'm also very, very precise on my entries. So like, I always miss entries, always, 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 always. But it's like, I don't even care because, dude, I'm going to miss entries. But at the same time, that precise execution that I need to have to take a trade has saved me so many times. And it's helped my win rate so much. Like, I don't have to trade every day. If I take three to five trades every single week, I'm set because I truly focus on, you know, one high quality play every single day. And that's it. And also, I don't jump from strategy to strategy. I literally traded one strategy the whole entire year. Everyone in my everybody in my Discord is like PB. You literally trade the same exact setup. You literally wait for the same exact thing every single day. I'm like, duh. If it's not broken, why fix it? 
Exactly. I loved your analogy too with the bus stop because I use a similar analogy. However, I think our age difference, uh, there, there's a different take on this analogy, <laughs> right? So you're using a bus stop analogy and, and you're still in, in high school. My analogy, because I'm a trend trader as well, just like you, right? I, all I'm looking for, when I think of being a trend trader, I really, from a from a 30,000 foot view, I really think of finding trend and momentum, buying a pullback and then riding the wave, right? Mm -hmm. So like you said, finding the bus that's moving, waiting for that bus stop, getting on it, and then riding it all the way through. When I think about this, I, I think about the fact that, you know, going through college and and being in, an, in the adult life, when you go to a party, right, you don't want to go to the party early because it's kind of boring and it might be, it might not be that, that hop in of a party. It might not be that hot of a party. So what do you do, right? You wait, you, you're, you're, you're allowed to be fashionably late to a party. You go in, you go into a party, you have a few drinks, you have a good time, you see some people, and then you leave. You don't stay. You don't get there. You're not the first one there. And you're not the last one at the party either. You're just there for the bulk of the party. And the same thing comes for a trend trader. We don't have to catch the entire move from zero to 100. If I can catch the move from 20 to 40, I can make life-changing money every single week in the market. And, and what you said with taking less is more, it leads me back to what my mentor told me when I was starting out. He said, you know, when you think about trading, I want you to think about it in the sense that trading is 80% waiting. 10% buying and 10% selling. He's like, if you're doing it the other way around, I guarantee you, you're going to start to lose money. Bro, I have probably 10,000 plus screen hours. And like, how many of those hours were I exactly actively in a trade? Dude, I, I've watched every single five minute candle on the S&P for the last two years plus. And if I haven't watched it live, I've reviewed it. You think I've taken that many trades? Heck no. I'll literally sit here for six hours straight in the summer. And if I don't see a trade, I won't take a trade. I'll just watch the price action because what it's doing, it's drilling these patterns in my head. What I'm going to see is like, just do screen time. Okay. I just saw this happen. And the next candle was up. Next time I see this candle, it's going to go up. Just kind of developing those little things in your head, you know, just through screen 100%. time. 100%. I'm curious too. One of the things that helped me, cause you hear it a lot, a lot of newer traders, anyone listening to this is brand new. They've probably heard a lot of traders like us say screen time, screen time, screen time. That's the biggest thing, right? Everyone needs to have screen time. For me, I found the shortcut to screen time was actually going back after the day and annotating charts, putting the patterns on the charts after, after the day is over. And when I see a bull flag uh, on a, on a five minute chart at the end of the day, when, when it's form when it's forming, the next day when that's forming in real time, it becomes so much easier because I'm like, I've seen this bull flag pattern play out before. And here's what happens eight out of 10 times. The majority of the time, this is what happens. And so annotating has really helped me, you know, um, get to that level of screen time a lot quicker than what I would have been able to do if I didn't annotate charts. Have, do you annotate charts or did you annotate in the beginning? Yeah. One thousand percent. Even to this day, I always annotate any chart, any stock that I take or like even if I miss a uh, trade, I'll always annotate it. Today I did it on NVIDIA. I missed a trade, 540 retest. I annotated the chart, mm -hmm. posted it in the Discord. Awesome, awesome. Well, I want to move into some rapid fire questions for you, uh, if that's oh. okay. I'm going to ask you some questions. And um, first thing that comes to mind for you, okay? So what do you like to do outside of trading? Work out. What's your biggest win in a day that you've had? Whether one trade or an entire day, what is your biggest, biggest day? A little biggest over trade? 10K. What is your biggest loss? Uh, like 67K. In one day? Yeah, in school. Wow, wow. Have you ever thought about quitting trading? Yes, and the funny thing is, I know it's supposed to be rapid fire, but I think this is really good to talk about. So two and a half years ago, I've been, I've been kind of aha moment profitable around two years now, consistent two years. So two and a half years ago, um, at this point, I've been trading for a year and a half. About to start this is eighth grade summer i'm about to start my freshman year of high school you probably see that picture on twitter of me in the red shirt uh, about to start high school but my parents we had a serious talk and i even had a text message i posted it on twitter and instagram they basically said that they think i should stop trading and I, i'm about to be my freshman year of high school and i should truly enjoy it and you know just take some time off and just enjoy my high school years and be a regular kid but I, I couldn't. And that was my sign that I had to make it. And there was no other choice. So from there, five months later, I got it. That truly flipped the switch in me like, yo, I really got to do this. You know, I want to be able to show my parents that I could do it because I felt like they kind of gave hope on me, even though they've always been supportive. But like that truly flipped the switch in me like, this is my time to shine. Failure is not an option. And if you make failure not an option in your brain, then you can't fail.
you cannot fail. I mean, your inputs, your output as well. For the, the year and a half before I was fighting, I it's like a it's like a boxing fight, you know. I was fighting eleven rounds straight with an opponent. Opponent, we were both tied up. That opponent was just gonna keep doing the same exact thing for the twelfth round. Me, I was thinking to myself, what am I gonna pull out that I haven't pulled out already? And it's Newton's third law. Your input is a direct proportional value of your output. If in the gym, if you work your ass off, you're going to get jacked. It's, it's, it's just proven scientific facts. Same thing with trading. If you truly, truly, truly try your hardest, you can't fail. 100%. I like the, I know it's rapid fire, but I do like the point you made there where you said you had a, a mental flip. It like everything kind of clicked for you. I think mm -hmm. every trader that hits a level of consistent profitability to a point where they can do this day in and day out, they have that turning point. There's there's a point in every trader's career where they're like, I remember this this one time where I was sitting there and it all clicked and I, I realized I was doing it all wrong and I should change exactly what I was doing. So I like that you hit that. So uh, back to the rapid fire, biggest inspiration uh, in your life? My dad. Best trader that you follow on social media or the number one trader that you like to follow on social media? Besides myself, of course. <laughs> Strat, um, FS Trades. Number one trading setup that you look for day in and day out that if you see it, you take it every single time. Key level view up retest on a break of structure. Best brokerage platform that you like to use? Thinkorswim. And the last rapid fire uh, is your celebrity. Do you have a celebrity crush? Um, Who's my celebrity crush? <laughs> I know you're 16, um, so you have to have someone. I don't know if it's T Swift, if it's... Uh, no. I don't know who the 16 year olds like, uh, nowadays. dude, I'm trying to think right now. Um, this is, Oh, Sarah Cameron, Sarah, Cameron. Madeline okay, Klein. Perfect. Madeline Klein. Okay. Perfect. Good, good answers. Um, all right. And I guess like to wrap it up, PB, the, the last thing that I want to talk about with you is you've already experienced so much at the age of 16, right? Super, super proud of you. Kudos to you, man, because there's a reason people are, are hating and trolling on you because they're 40, 50, 60 years old, and they see you and they're like, man, I, I wasted my entire life. And PB is 16 and he's making more money than most people make in an entire week and in, in a single day. So as you think about your pro progression and your journey, as far as what you've done in the last two years, what's next for you? How much money do you want to make? Do you have a goal of how much money you want to make? Do you have a goal of how many businesses you want to have, uh, industries that you want to get into? I imagine that you're going to make enough money day trading that you're going to want to diversify and start to look into some passive things or branch out into different industries. So I'm just curious, what's next for you as you grow your new age community and you continue to grow and stack and compound your active income in the market? As far as like a set dollar amount, honestly, like I don't think I'll ever retire to be honest with you. Like in anything, it's just like some people are built like that where like they have a fire inside of them. Like I just, I'll always have a drive, you know, I always want to be building something cool, but as far as, you know, passively, I am buying, I'm working on buying my first rental property this summer. So I'm searching for that kind of starting to invest my capital into, you know, investment properties, stuff like that. Invest in, investments, probably going to get a nice watch. And I'm also working at a new company, which can be a really, really big tech company could honestly have an eight, nine figure buyout. And, um, I'm working on, obviously I've, I've got a pretty nice active income, but I'm working on exponentially growing that active income and throwing it all into passive income. Cause I think that's how I build generational wealth and real estate kind of is going to be the number one thing Then also, once I get out of high school, I'm going to work on building IRL businesses as well. So more or less like buying them and kind of running them with, you know, my business parts. Awesome. And PB, as we close it out, if people want to get a hold of you or want to learn more from you, where can they follow? Where's the best place for anyone to go to that wants to learn more about what you do, what you teach, um, and kind of what you have going on? Is is it Twitter, Instagram, TikTok? Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PB Investing. Awesome. Don't Make get sure scammed. There's a lot of fake accounts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the one bad thing about our industry, right? There's yeah. um, I saw actually one of the bigger creators in our space. Someone uh, used his handle. Uh, and, uh, their, their mom got, uh, you know, scammed for, I think it was like $500,000. Yeah. So make sure you guys, if you're listening, none of us will ever ask you how your trading's going. None of us will ever ask you to send us any Bitcoin or any money to trade with. That's not what we do. We just want to help you guys grow and realize what's possible with the stock market. So, um, somebody that, scammed you, somebody through my thing for 80, their whole life savings and old lady. Wow. So sad. That's, that's horrible. Yeah. Like so we could do this all through crypto. Yeah. Are you verified on socials, by the way? Twitter, I'm verified. Instagram, I'm not. They won't verify okay. me. 
Okay. Well, make sure you guys use common sense when you're, uh, you know, interacting with other profiles, whether it's us or anyone else in the space. Um, don't send anyone any money that you don't know. So, uh, with that PB really appreciate you coming on, man. Really appreciate the wisdom. And, uh, I'm excited, right? I'm excited to see where you go to this year. And then, like I said, five, 10 years from now, I'm excited to, to see where you're at. I'll be, I'll be cheering for you along the way, man. Thank you so much for having me, Strat. Everyone smash that like button, subscribe, follow Strat. He's a beast and big things coming with him. Yep, let's do it in 2024. Peace out, guys. Peace.